Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. One of the most familiar and fascinating of the larger animals of North America is the black bear. The female black bear usually has her young in January, and by the time the cubs are four months old, they're bundles of energy filled with insatiable curiosity. They're also a full-time job for a mother bear trying to teach them the fundamentals of survival. Tree climbing is an important method of survival, and it works fine against such potential foes as wolves and coyotes. But there are times when it's of no avail because some predators can also climb. Black bears are found over much of this continent, but the bear family we're concerned with lives here in the southeastern mountainous portion of the state of Utah. It's an area of plateaus and cliffs and huge ponderosa pines, and we call today's story The Bear Cubs of Painted Canyon. <laughs> Another beautiful spring has descended over Utah, and the mountainous slopes and meadows are clad in the brilliant colors of wildflowers, which grow in profusion everywhere. In Painted Canyon, a cougar has had her kittens in a log den, and she keeps them under close scrutiny. The cougar kittens are full of life and curiosity, filled with a growing need to explore and learn ever more about this exciting world surrounding them. This is the time when young animals begin to venture into the outside world. Their mother will soon begin teaching them how to hunt and survive, but not yet. For now, she will merely guard them as they gradually grow familiar with their immediate surroundings. A similar situation exists farther up the canyon slopes, where a large female bear lives in a den with her two cubs. The mother bear has already led the cubs through this area near the den. Now, they are permitted to move about in this same territory on their own while from nearby she watches their activities. Today the cubs will not be taught any specific lessons by their mother. The cubs are free to play as they wish or move about near the den. Painted Canyon has many animals, such as rock squirrels, which share this habitat with the black bear cubs. Later on, the cubs will learn more about the rock squirrels and other wild neighbors in their training from the big female. Right now is that delightful time when they're too young for advanced lessons from their mother yet old enough to have a wonderfully good time. As with many young animals, play consumes much of their time, and practically any natural object encountered can become a focal point for their games. The female bear knows that they have no conception of danger yet. And so she'll keep alert to intervene if necessary, but only if it really is essential. Intervention isn't needed at the appearance of a red fox, but it's an excellent opportunity for a cub to get his first close-up look. The cub quickly decides that the fox might be an enemy. The fox is really not at all interested in the bear cubs. A rabbit has passed this way, and its scent still lingers. 
the fox is trying to determine where it went. The cubs have turned their attention away from the fox and its hunting. Instead, they're now searching for honey among fallen trees, where their mother found some in a log she tore apart on their first outing. Stump climbing is easy. It's what you do when you get on top that presents a problem. Old dead leaves are neither tasty nor satisfactory as toothpicks. But it's something to chew while the other cub decides what he's going to do on the stump. Maybe he thinks this is a bee tree with some honey on the top. But his exploratory licking goes unrewarded. Cubs are much too preoccupied with their own amusements to be on the lookout for danger. But fortunately for them, someone is. Their mother's grunt warns of an approaching danger. The cougar has left her kittens at the den log and is now hunting. She's no real threat to the cubs. But the warning grunt has sent them up a tree for safety. are a little frightened by the sight of the big cat sharpening her claws. There is no prey of interest to the cougar for the moment at the little flooded meadow, so she'll move on to hunt elsewhere. Had she desired to do so, she could have climbed the tree which the bear cubs used as a refuge. But tiny bears are not ordinarily prey for the big cats, especially if there's a chance, as there usually is, that the cubs might have a protector watching unseen from somewhere nearby. So now, with the danger past, but the memory of it still lingering, the cubs decide it's time to head back for the den for some temporary reassurance. The mother bear had been watching everything very closely and knew her offspring were not in danger. But her presence here is still reassuring to them. She is satisfied that whether or not they know it, the cubs have learned the lesson to always be alert for danger. The cubs have stayed at the den area for almost an hour, and now their mother has caught sight of the cougar returning from her hunt. Having eaten her fill, she's no longer hunting. But a muskrat has caught her attention, and she's curious. The muskrat has been feeding in the flooded meadow, having been attracted by fresh vegetation in this water. But it wasn't wise for the rodent to enter an area where the avenues of escape are so limited. The muskrat can be thankful that the big cat is not actively hunting. If the cougar had seen the muskrat here in these shallows earlier when she passed and was on the hunt, the muskrat would have had no chance.
For the cougar, it's a cat and mouse game, which amuses her for a little while. And while she moves in close, she also respects the muskrat's sharp teeth and is careful to avoid being bitten. The cougar is tired of the game, and as she heads for home, one of the bear cubs grows careless. Fortunately, he's only dazed, and maybe next time he'll watch his step. The cubs are ready to resume their movements, but this time the mother bear decides to stay close to protect them as they enter new areas. It's part of the growing up process for them to feel they're on their own. But she'll stay close enough to come to their aid if they really need help. The mother bear scents a fresh spoor on the ground, which might forecast a hazard for the cubs. She becomes immediately alert when the potential danger does appear. Coyotes are unpredictable, and the female bear has no intention of letting this one get near her young. <laughs> the coyote is not easily discouraged because he has some food buried in this area and doesn't want to leave it. coyote has had enough and decides to leave. Immediately, the big female bear checks on her offspring's whereabouts and sees that they've now encountered another inhabitant of the area, but are being very careful. They seem to know instinctively that the big badger could be very dangerous, but if not pestered, he'll probably continue with his digging and leave them alone. The coyote senses that he might be able to steal the badger's prey. Aware of the sharpness of the badger's teeth, he keeps out of range. The commotion has caused the hole's inhabitant to appear at the back exit, and the coyote catches its scent at once. Seeing a chipmunk and capturing it are two very different things, even when the chipmunk doesn't have a hole to hide in. It's the coyote who loses as the chipmunk escapes. The female bear decides no threat remains, and the playing cub, seeing that they're being left behind, run to join her. Her grunt tells the cubs that they must stay closer to her. The big female bear is thirsty, 
and the water in the painted canyon creek is refreshing. At the base of a big anthill, the two cubs are attacked by the insects they've disturbed. They blame one another, and a serious fight breaks out between them. Their fighting has caused considerable damage to the anthill. And now, as the cubs pause in their fighting, thousands of ants boil out from underground and rush to the attack. The cubs soon realize that the ant bites are not the fault of one another, and the only way to stop them is to get away from where they are. Leaving the insects far behind, the cubs return to the creek bed where their mother is. This is a place much used for sunning and hunting by a large gopher snake. The snake is lying so motionless that the cubs miss seeing it at first. So enwrapped are they in their own playing. After their play carries them back to the area, one cub catches sight of the snake. And since it's the first one he's ever seen, he's fascinated by it. Until it moves. The second cub drops in unexpectedly. Although they've never before encountered a snake, and this one is not venomous, both cubs have an intuitive fear of the reptile. It's probably good that the cubs do fear it, as the next snake encountered may not be as harmless as this one. The female bear and her cubs are at a tree they visited before, close to home. Toads are something new for the cubs. They've seen and done a lot this day, learning many things for themselves. And yet, there are still some lessons to be learned. Toads, for example, taste bad. And they're also very good at pretending to be dead when they're really not hurt at all. fortunate toad gets away, but it's already forgotten by the cubs, who have just about reached the conclusion that sparring and wrestling is undoubtedly the greatest fun in life. It has been a very long day for the female, trying to keep pace with her seemingly tireless cubs. But now, the long and eventful day is all but over. The female has guarded the cubs as best she could. But sometimes, there are occurrences she cannot prepare them for or protect them from. female's concern for her cub is fading now. For like most young mammals, the cub swims instinctively, and he's reached the opposite shore without any difficulty at all. As for the big female, though she can swim very well, she prefers not getting wet just now unless she has to. And there's a place downstream where she can cross over to her cubs with minimal wading.
The water is cool and a delightful sensation on the feet of the big bear after the long walk with her offspring. Now with the two cubs still leading the way and their mother following close behind, the bear family is approaching a large open area which lies before the den. A beautiful meadow alive with yellow spring flowers. The weary female has kept pace with her cubs all day. But now she's pleased to be near home where she no longer has to match the boundless energy of the bear cubs of Painted Canyon. Although the black bear is undoubtedly the most adaptable bear species on our continent, its continued existence cannot be taken for granted. Some bears of this species, as we've seen, are partial to desert mountains and ponderosa pine country. However, some of the same species may live in the swamplands of our southeastern states, and still others may range about in the hardwood and pine forests of our northeastern states. Whatever the habitat preference, certain segments of such terrain should be set aside as natural areas where the bears can continue to live their lives in a balanced natural situation. Much wild land is being lost due to the encroachment of man, and so it's important to take strong steps to make sure that black bears will always be a part of the wild kingdom.